All right, so we are setting up against a wall area. So the wall is to your feet. And this, this session will be kind of a, we'll have some twists and turns in it. You'll start with a very familiar beginning. And so nothing will be strange at first. So let's take a bolster on top of a blanket with a blanket on top of that and a nice um, elevation under your, well, actually not under your back quite yet. I want you to sit so you're next to the wall space. I might be too close. Okay. And you're going to move your, your feet to touch the wall. If it seems like you're pushed up against it, push back your bolster. Okay. Take your belt, have your feet on, uh, grounded together, soles of the feet, scoop them up with your belt, let them stay landed on the ground, and then tighten up, cinch up your belt so your buckle is near your hip, okay? And once you, you scoop up you kind of the, the upper rear zone, it's not as if you're trying to tuck your rear into the belt, you know, like your flesh. It's like you're trying to push that belt low so that you will be able to stretch out these, the circulation, the, the length in the inner thigh. So it should feel like it's a bit of a tug, but not so much you are losing sensation that goes to sleep. If your belt is, um, is twisted, fix that. And then first things first, we're going to center our spine onto the bolster. And all these things to kind of take for granted, let's, let's focus on those today. The lines of, of emphasis. This is the nice thing about practice together and having a guided sequence so that you can kind of tune in. Since sometimes you might do practice, but be distracted doing other things at the same time. So here we are aligned. We've got our belt. It's from my ankles. My feet are together. I'm choosing, instead of my soles and my feet really stretching open, to try to keep my toes touching the wall, so I'm stretching through the toes. Not aggressively, but formatively through the toes. You can have your blocks either high or kind of mid-cycle, so you kind of pivot them to conform to the flesh of the leg. Bring your arms back behind you, even if it's subtle and it's out from the chest band or it's back from the shoulder layout straight behind you. Feel chest band with the arms open and feel shoulders when the arms go back. And continue to work on centering yourself on your blanket, on your spine. And then as the arms progress to each other at their hands, interlace your fingers and turn the hands inside out to get a mild stretch of the arms. And the arms moving back, maybe over, overhead, maybe slightly overhead. And I want you to alternate that motion for a few breaths. So we move the arms towards the towards the wall, and then back, either just over the chest or a little bit overhead. Get some movement into the arms. And it feels as if the arms are kind of unified as the cluster to the hands. And so it may feel like you don't really identify with right arm, left arm, but it's just a, a band of movement out of your back, which is where I'm trying to get our, our focus is kind of a whole body awareness to begin. Okay, now, Getting a sandbag, placing that across the ribs, maybe low, maybe a little bit higher for some of us. Everyone's unique at their sand correspondence. If you decide no sand, maybe you have a couple sandbags. You could put one on each thigh, um, or you could put one on your feet. It just might be a little bit funny with the, with the wall and the sand addition, but you get to decide as the sand is responding to the breath cycle. I think this is a good one, even if it can feel a little bit pressurized for your comfort level to have something pushing on you. I think it's a good breath uh, clarification to begin. So as the arms center down in a relaxed shoulder manner, 
Feel the lift of the sand with your inhale. And exhale, letting go on the out breath. You can change where the sand is during this breath beginning. You be higher up. Turn the sand from the heart towards the belly. Let's feel where the length of the breath is as you breathe in through the nose for a count of four to five. And when you exhale out for five to six. Feeling the line of the spine centered and relaxing. So as you forward your breath, right, it's an expectation out of your mind, but also out of the the wave of movement we're going to go into. But even though it's going to be deep work sensation, still continue to contribute to your, your breath emphasis. So once we kind of have that agreement in our, in our consciousness with focusing on breath, taking any sand away, and when we're kind of left minus that, pressure, it's kind of a relief, you know, to have no weight onto you. And there are still places that you can feel featured that might not move with the breath in your mid body. So as you unbuckle and slide the belt, it can still be underneath you. It doesn't need to be completely shed from your station. But feel when the feet scoot up a little higher, slide the blocks away. And you know, get a feel when the feet are sliding towards the groins, what that feels like in your knees, especially on the side of the knee, maybe you know, enter uh, bands of the knee. Sometimes you'll feel your, your challenging spots of the knee when you move the feet this way. But as you position your knees to point straight up and the feet separate, that probably goes away, right? Because this is a generic knee. Um, I guess this could be one of the first knee orders that the knees get in relationship to development, right? When, they, when you're when you're a little one, uh, laying on your back, your knee goes up this position. But get a ball and let's bring the ball to the outer upper left leg and lift up. So see what you can do with these two ideas. This is always bringing back some core strength. So I got a ball in my left hand. I have it next to my outer left leg. It's kind of high up towards the, where I would point to my rear, that area. And then, you know, how far down your legs are on a slant board, you don't have far because you got a wall. So it's kind of good. You can use the wall for some, for some accuracy here. So I'm gonna just feel my left foot touch the wall, bring my right foot up to the wall. And then I want you just to work for a moment on kind of pushing to the wall with that foot. That right foot. So there's only so far you're going to go with that with your back muscles. You lift it up. It's quite delightful. Okay. And now if you can coordinate, this is real interbalance work of your stomach. You can't really see it or identify it right in that in observation. It's inside. But I want you to work on feeling your right foot push. And then as you retract that leg, your goal is to get your right ankle to the left knee eventually. I want you to feel the slow motion. So you're going to move that right knee towards your chest, and then you flip that knee open to put that right foot to the left leg. It's kind of awkward to get that to go slow. But there are some lower 
right abdominal muscles that have to be, you have to recruit those muscles to get that. So I want you to try that just a few times. Just step to the wall, bring the foot to the left leg. Take a few of those, just push the wall, cross to the left leg. And, you know, if it's pretty easy going for you, well, that's okay. But as you practice further, you'll probably find some areas that pop up, some that can be used to help you get that motion. So if your belly just kind of pushes out, then you might have some work to do to go a little deeper into the floor. So let's play with that. Let's lean our body weight into the ball, push the ball in so it's enough underneath your left leg that you can lean into it with your leg. Left foot relaxes. So if it's been bunched up against the wall, I would encourage you to slide it just enough away so the outer left foot is on the ground relaxing. It's actually being pushed into it here. But hold on to the right knee and let the body weight lean into that ball. So feel where the circulation deepens into your hip. If it's pretty mild this today from after doing that step to the wall crossover, you might notice it, it kind of loosens things up. Maybe it does for you. But as you feel the body centered on the bolster, no extra twisting, just center back. Only twisting actions from the hip across to the left. of the class hip turns a hip turn the resting holding the knee giving a little bit of a pull to kind of excite the, the circulation around the muscles in the hip and the lower back okay and then change so that we release the right foot down left foot to the wall okay Move the ball to the right upper outer leg, squish it in there. Let's definitely stop. And then practice this motion of stepping to the wall, step into the wall, sort of, cross the foot to the knee, that left ankle. And if it seems like doing this kind of quickly is easier, that's okay. You know, some of your muscle kind of networks are probably used to doing things if, if a little faster twitch. And when you slow it down, it's irritating. So you're trying to gradually get to slow. I mean, you should, you should definitely acknowledge that you're doing this practice because getting to slow is not, doesn't seem to be a, a popular thing. Sometimes I like an observation, not sure. So once I get my foot to the right knee, I'm going to stay there and I'm going to lean the body weight to the right side. So I kind of swish the legs to the right, hold the left knee, and my left arm is relaxed. I'm trying to kind of replenish the hip. Yeah, so sink your, your right upper outer leg into that ball, sink into it. If you find that you are putting a little bit more weight in small increments, that's okay. Of course, you don't want you going off your bolster. That would be too much. So rest your eyes. Dedicate a few cycles of breath specifically to feel the circulation in the hip. Once you've established the direction of the leg and the hip joint, feel the easy flush of breath, just easy going breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. The 
relax your grip, tuck the leg, let the leg come back and center. And now as we uncross, we'll put the ball between the knees. If for some reason you don't have a ball, you can always use a block. It's a good option. Now if I squeeze into the ball, it's going to flatten a little bit. And see if you can scoot your feet to the wall. That's very close. This is your maximum now, and this can be, can add some element of in, intrigue to, to movement. So when we stretch our arms either back behind us, a little bit, elbows out, kind of cactus arms. You know, feel when your arms go straight out and see if you can reach them out and then slide them down, not on the ground, but in the air, and then come up to sitting. So you're recruiting that core band. If you've got stuff on the side, you might have to purposely move it. And then lower back down so you widen out the arms and bring them back. Now they're kind of in this, um, this kind of a V shape, right? It's not like I have my arms straight back. They're expanding. And the expansion is for the, the chest band. Okay, now come back up to so scoop. And let this be one that, where you have some consistent um, timing. You're coming up. The ball squeezing might not happen to you. You might find that too difficult to add. It might be a relationship of just getting up and then going back down. So, yeah, so the arms have momentum. And the wall actually, it's kind of helpful for me. If I don't have a wall for this, I'm a little bit of a fl I flail to hold my balance and my core. I don't know if anybody finds the wall at all helpful. Who's going to let me know? <laughs> yeah, so use the wall last time. One more time. So the arms go out and then, yeah, so what? So, so back up there. Okay, I know I'm, I'm identifying with you for on this one. So when you do go out and forward, everyone keep working on it. The thing to, to avoid is that kind of the choppy band of like, the arms like this one, like this, right? So we want to go out and then kind of scoop around. So this abdominal area, especially the rib cage, has to band and then help you come up. I don't know if that's helpful. Is it helpful? There, let's go. There you go. Okay. After 52 of these. <laughs> okay, come on up. Take out the take out the ball. Come on up. Okay, turn the bolster. Sit on up. Okay, after all that back kind of uh, whining, I know it could be whining. I want you to get your blanket to unfold it. So you've got two blankets behind you. You could turn and do it, or you could do it from sitting in front. That's fine. The key, the, the key is that your feet touch the wall. You're, you're flat to the wall with your feet. You don't want to be too much extra. I don't want you to have extra room to, to climb the wall. If you end up pushing farther back after you do some of the patterns, perfect. Okay. But push to the wall and then just find the simple movement of your seat and the arrival of the waist above it. Like, so I'm sitting, I'm breathing, and I can feel when I breathe. Maybe the ribs. I don't feel so much my belly zone. I'll get there. So slide the left foot in. Keep the foot on the, um, the inside of the right leg. We, we're used to crossing it almost every time. So a little too close. Okay. So left foot on the inside. This is my inside of my right leg. Okay. Now, you're going to lean forward. Some of you have seen this in Ashtanga classes from long ago, probably. It's you're leaning forward and your waist, this left side, is touching my leg. Touching. Okay. So I want you to work on reaching your arms out of the waist, not as far overhead at all, just out of the waist. It feels a little bit, a little bit weird, I think. So you have to use your back muscles a lot to do this. Right? You have to recruit your stomach, uh, your posterior core that you have them to work on. So keep this reach for a few moments, push into the wall. If your knee is hyperextending, you want to do a little micro bend of your right knee. 
push into the wall, you're working your back. And then reach for the left leg, cross it over the right leg, okay? If your foot turns in and you cross it over, might have it, okay? Might have it, maybe it's your habit too. Try to keep those toes parallel. All right, now bring the left arm back to the blanket, left hand back, cross the right arm to the left leg and take a twist and try to find the twist that it's like very central in the rib complex. It hooks with the elbow and you rotate and you get a feel of the weight of the hips. Now this is not going to be purposely feeling your hips right now. It is certainly going there. Right okay, now hug the leg in with the right arm if that's possible. So you're holding it in towards the right side of your waist. Okay, now get a feeling you have a pretty good glued in leg here. Right sitting bone is heavy. Breathing. Remember, it's a work in progress, so you kind of don't know what's coming, and that's good too. Now come back to the front and hands to the bolster or back on the blanket if you have long arms. And you're going to slide the right foot in, and I want you to uncross the legs so the legs are in a simple supasana, just simple cross legged position. Okay, if you're kind of finding your bucket seat here. Use your hands however they work to help you sit up. You don't want to get in that little bucket chair. Don't get a bucket chair. Okay. So take a sandbag to the left thigh and then reach towards the wall. I'm going to use a ball under my right knee. This feels comfy. You can also put something in your left knee if that is helping you. The sandbag might be sufficient interest for your left leg. But as you approach going forward, let's say I feel a pull on the inside of my left knee like a tightening, then that would be a reason for something under your leg, right? I could actually use the ball on that side too. So find where you could use that ball. Reach to the wall. If you can't quite get the wall, which you're pretty close, but your back is restricting you, I would take a couple blocks if it's, if it's it's really uncomfortable to get the wall and just have it at the highest setting in front of you. And even those few inches are going to make a difference for some. So feeling that attitude of homing into your back, right into your hip. If you want to get into some, you know, featuring movement so you can scoot deeper into that hip, you might scoot your rear a little bit back on the bolster. Even to the point you feel like you're hanging off the back of the bolster, as long as you don't fall off of it. And tilt your waist down towards the legs. You're trying to go towards the ground, right? With your, your torso. Not to go higher up the wall. This is not the goal, it's to go further down. Yeah, and focus on where the move is in your back, where it stretches out of your back. Breathing, centering, now feel when your movement is forward. I actually feel this in both hips. I don't feel it in just one, I feel both. So as you move back, we'll bring your hands to your bolster lightly. And then we'll take our sand away and come back to pigeon. So I want you to have your right knee forward, your left leg moves back. Okay, so your blanket should be in a reasonable, you might have to scoot it back so it's under your knee, but use both of them. Use that added height. Mm -hmm. We don't have hands at the wall for this one. We're going to use our forearms to go down to the ground or the blocks. And I like to kind of find that the, the borders of the hip, we're working through 
they're kind of the, the edges of them. I think by the completion of the session, you'll feel pretty interesting uh, balancing your hips. So anchor your attention on that right hip. And then your elbows are, again, at the height that you like. If you happen to have another bolster, you might put that under your elbows too. It could be a little bit more squishy. Okay. So maybe you could say cushy. It's a little more cushy than the blocks. The back leg is heavy. So not curling the foot in. Feel if you can let the back leg relax. Let your head release down, rain down. Now, when you come to a light lift of your head, use the, the opportunity here of transition to feel the torso lift. It's a really unusual moment of lifting the torso because in the day, I guess the day meaning your, your legs are right under your, your hips, um, you don't really have the opportunity to stretch the abdomen this way. You know, it just it, it kind of just drops, right? It, it goes with gravity, it slumps down. So use the practice to kind of to help the, the gravitational force on the organs and the muscles move it around. That could be just the only reason you do class is to help the influence of gravity in your in your body, change things around, massage things. And then tilt to your right hip and then move the left leg forward. I know you got stuff in the way, but move it aside for a moment. And then as we're here, our left foot is at the wall, our right knee points up, which the right foot is besides the, the left leg. I think you can see it well enough. It's here, it's on the inside. Okay. So now as we're here, we're going to reach towards the wall. Okay. If your back is trying to figure out how to adjust and create some length. Let's just squish the other way and it's lengthening this way. Working on reaching. So the last thing you wanna do is wedge things together in the back of your spine. You don't want to create wedging. So you're working on reaching. This is a good one for that because these two balance points for the spine. Okay, now reach for the right leg, cross it over the left. Try to stay with that emphasis as if you've got a spring on the top of your head. A little bit of lift. Right foot on the outer side of the left leg. Turn to the right, right hand back. Left arm hooks to that right leg. And we press and rotate. Now one side might be a little more refreshing than the other for some of us. So, yeah, give a little direction to the pose. So feel where the body rotates, where the spine centers, breathing. Now, after that process of pressing with the arm, hold on to the leg with your left hand and kind of help yourself. Just feel how you can create a nice form of movement here to come out. So you turn forward. This is the leg that's going to be crossed in front, right? The right leg. Slide the left foot back. Feel that knee kind of motion out. They don't get tossed, but your knees don't get tossed out. They have. This muscle tone, it's it, you feel that feature with that. So as you put the sand on that right leg, and maybe a ball under the left or the right leg, 
And this side feels even better with the ball, like more you know, essential that I have it. So if you have something under the knees, it might give you uh, the capacity to lean into it, feeling kind of secure in the joint. So all this middle area that we're trying to work into provide circulation, it's dependent on these joints having some mobility, right? Not stiffness. So when you lean forward, reach the wall or the blocks, okay? So either one that works for the wall. And if you decide you want to get to the wall, not the blocks, you can always scoot your bolster farther closer to the wall. You can do that too. That'll work out fine. So, and you don't want to scoot the bolster farther back and strain your back. So feel the pressure of your hands. This is a good build up for standing poses, right? Because we use the arms, we use the reinforcement of the wall for motivation and support. It kind of streamlines the focus in our back. And let the spine feel that it's lengthening, not, you know, rolling under. So you might notice that your sitting bones are grounded. The spine has a stretch. The muscles along the spine reaching. If you've got blocks under your hands, you'll have them down at the second or the third setting, right? You might have them all the way up. That's at least a little easier maybe than pushing up higher at the wall. Now, I kind of like the blocks actually. It feels a little bit more, um, it's a deeper stretch in my hip with the block. More site specific for me. So that would mean that we're getting resistance, which would equal weight bearing. Right? So that's what we would do in yoga for the bones. So we're trying to find resistance. That's the idea with exercise, resistance. So noticing where that resistance is, breathing can only help. Okay, now come back to the legs. Take off the sand. Okay, let's see. Sand is going to need to be on the left side of your mouth. I'm just putting it here so you can't sit on the way. But just sit to keep in mind, put the sand on the left. And then move that right leg back. Okay, the bolster is in a good setting for you. If you're too close to the wall, you might need to scoot it back. You're getting used to tackling your bolster nowadays. So you press into the support. Now it's basically bringing the floor up for you. And you know, I don't like to be kind of out in space without any support for this one. I like to have something underneath my arms to lift. So if the, the leg behind you, the front of the leg, right, all the way through the hip flexor, through the top of the thigh, is releasing down. So feel that reaction of length. And let the body weight center on the blocks. Yeah, don't no, feel like you have to stay exactly in the pose you, you chose the shaping, right? You might be able to work on. I think one of the, the foundation formulas I like to think of is the shape influences the circulation. So if you get the idea of the pose, right, you might be changing around the actual delivery of it, right, with the breath, with the, the 
choice of movement into it. So let's feel our body weight goes forwards and downwards. And then it seemingly is on the hip, but some of you might feel the front of the right thigh stretch nicely. Keep that feature going in the next pose. See if you can choreograph yourself into this one. So, and part of the choreography is just go slow, mindful, and then it works out really, really quite well. Now, I let the weight, I find that I'm not exactly clear if I should go right, moving to right thigh more than my left hip. So, as I walk back with my weight lifting my torso, right, the stretch of the torso, then I lean into my left hip and then I swing the right leg forward. Okay, so take a, a few moments to set up for side stitch. So, what you're gonna do is you'll probably need your sand and your ball. You don't need your belt. So you can kind of leave that a, a, now it feels like just one less prop, like not having a chair seems like less, like we're missing something. I liked having the chair under my hand for that last class. Okay. If you do have a chair and you can always use it for your for your arm overhead. So taking the blocker chair and the ball on the inside of the leg. The right leg and the last pose. Let's see, we had the pigeon pattern. And this was exactly what it was. This right leg is back. It's the same thing, it just looks different. See what I'm not being that creative. <laughs> it's the same thing, but it just looks like we're lying on the bolster a different way. That's just day to day. It's the same thing, it just looks like we're doing something different. Making it up. So I've got my sand on my side. This feels nice in the waist to get the, the waist to feel a reach. The arm can be wherever you want it to be. If it's overhead, if it's on the bolster, if it's on your side, if you're shrugging your right shoulder back and rolling on the back of your head, trying to get your shoulder comfortable. It's okay. Yeah. But all the while, the place that I have to get a little bit more centered is my right knee. So if I have the ball on the inside of that leg, I might use my left foot to kind of help me finagle where that should be on the inside of that knee. Because I do want it to feel supported. And I like my foot touching the wall so it does feel kind of comfortable. Okay, so you choose where your arm is going to be. Overhead to the side. And then let's Balance the movement of the ribs with the breath. Feel the weight into your left hip. Feel the weight of your right arm. Closing your eyes so you can internalize. And then ensure that the weight of your head, that might be the actual final instruction, is the weight of your head relaxes. Now, let's say the ball is helpful, but you're kind of holding a little bit of your muscles just to maintain that, that touch on the ball. And I feel like I'm kind of using a little bit, some percentage of effort. So see if you can reduce the efforting before you leave the pose. If there's something that you're efforting, maybe it's the neck, maybe the shoulder, could certainly be the right leg. 
So you can bring that right leg to the left leg in a fetal position as well. It's, you just you can't resist effort. It can be a little better for us to finish up the pose with ease. Ease, please. Slide the sand away and find your way to a table pose. And this might take you some time to figure out how you're going to switch around to your hands. You might work with the bolster underneath your mid body, but find that way to hands, knees, and I'm going to move my bolster a little bit back so it doesn't, it's not an influencer in my arms pattern. But have some space. If you need a blanket under your knees, use it. If you are uh, if you don't, then don't have it. But if you need it, use it. Um, place your feet to touch the wall. So maybe a good part of your foot feels like it's pushing back into the wall, toes under. Round your back and feel the spine just move it. And then arch to back. Okay, and you might find you have intelligence in the back muscles where you understand the option that's the most positive, but I think both directions create, cumulatively create a positive circulation in your spine. Might you need positive and you need, you need both directions, flexing and extending, okay, flexing, arching, Okay, most creatures do both. Now lift up the knees and stretch up. This is out of your, your wheelhouse right now. You can always come down to your elbows, get in your bolster and lift up your knees. I'll just demonstrate that in just a second. So this is downward dog. I do like my bolster right here for that. I do feel like that's perfect for me. But you can also put your elbows on the ground. You can have a block between your hands. And then lift up the knees. This is pretty challenging on shoulders. If it's easier for you because of your wrists, that's fine, but it's a lot of shoulder strain. So if it, you do this and you want to just try it anyway because you, you feel like you want to strengthen up your arms and your shoulders are safely able to, you know, give it a try. It's also a nice stretch for the upper arm. Okay, so give it a few moments, your choice. You can tell you haven't done that one in a while, but your arms, your upper arms can use that, that energetic. Okay, now we have a lift of the hips for a few more seconds. And now I want you to feel when you lower down onto your knees, take the hands, so now my toes, I'm gonna to stretch the top of my foot on the ground. So I'm not gonna have my toes pushing into the wall, top of the foot on the ground. And then I want you to get a feel of moving the left arm forward. So you can't lift your leg up behind you because you kick the wall. So this gets us to do it this way. And then change and let the right arm reach. So this doesn't take much before the wrist is complaining. But feel that if your mid body is doing any work to get the arm up or if you're relying on your wrist. Okay, now turn to your right hip, turn left to your right hip for side stage. Scoot your bolster back so you have enough range. And then as you lean in, you get the ball to the inside of the left leg. And, you know, create some curiosity with your, your balancing of your bones on your props and the props on your bones. So your sand goes on the side. Get a feel how that left arm maybe is resting on the side. Maybe that's a very responsible way for you to be with the side stretch. But you know, even if it seems minimal that you're activating right now, let's say you, you think you need to do more, it doesn't feel good for your arm to go overhead or something, you're not striving. It's it's interesting how this puts the dimension of, of support for our back muscles. Sideline is really the most relaxing for our backs. It's a typical sleeping position, right side. So noticing 
what's soothing for you. It's okay to do something regenerating. And then relax your brain. And the shoulder, go where it feels okay for you. Maybe it's not any of these directions. Maybe you're kind of have your arm hanging back. But you know when your arm is okay with it. And then a strain kind of peels into the shoulder guard. And you know, oh, I can only do so much strain. Then you find something different. This is why the chair was nice, because if you have that much height in your arm overhead, it, it doesn't clip as much to the rotator cuff. It tends to cinch down there when the arm goes down. It's up, it's down. It gives me more space and vent around that rotator cuff. It's, it's such a, a compressed amount of uh, muscles together right in that spot. Take a few more breaths. It only helps. You decide on your arm situation. And your head, if you're on the back of your head, if you're on the side, feel how the neck responds. Try to let your head relax. So for a moment, visualize pigeon pose with the right leg. Because this is formatively what we're, we're up to, right? Last side, we went right from pigeon to this. So maybe it was instant awareness. <clears throat> but we're, we're towards the tail end of this, this side stage work. So just notice where the, the right knee is towards the bolster. The left leg stretches back. Okay. Again, all these poses are the same thing, right? They just look like we're putting the shape on a different um, plane in the body, like, you know, lateral, and we're just changing the zones. That's all we're doing. Okay, now, as you roll to your right, you're going to come around to that table option. But this time, I want you to move your bolster straight forward, and you're going to push your, your feet at the wall, and I want you to have the bolster so when you lie on it, the, the base of the bolster, the short end is at the top of your thigh, but it's not too far down. You do not want the bolster on your, like on the knee, a, a right below the knee. So you want to lean into it, you know, like if you're doing up dog, but it shouldn't feel like it's intrusive in that, that uh, leg zone. So you want to be able to lower down. And I want you to have it so that your feet push the wall. So let's say you're pushing, but you're bending a lot with the knees. Just move your bolster a little forward away from the wall. Yeah, there's like this, this, this spot. If the bolster's not just at the top of the thighs, it hurts the knee. So you have to have it a little bit under your thigh so the knee doesn't push down as far. Top in. A little bit underneath the leg. You kind of play with it. That doesn't feel well, or feel well for you to find what would be supportive of the bolster. What I want you to do is, is use the blankets under your arms, okay? And it could feel a little funky on the chest area, but lower your forehead to the hands and take a few moments, separate the feet at the wall, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be really far out, not, not a stretch for your legs, but it's a foundation. And I want you to work on Stretching the legs back so the knees are off the ground. So the bolster should be enough height. So when you push your feet into the wall, you can walk your feet a little bit up the wall if you prefer not to have your toes scrunched up. But 
I'm just going to stretch the toes so I have a little bit of, of, uh, of almost flex of my feet. And then I reach my feet back so my heels are at the wall. So we're going to do a little workout for your core. Okay. So try that. Let your forehead go back to your hands. Okay. All right. Now, so you're going to balance your body straight down like it is. I'm just turning so I'm not just muffled into my hands. The hand muffler. Okay, now feet are at the wall, and you're going to lift up the right leg, right? So your head is down, your right leg is lifting, your glute is very much active at this point, your, your butt off. And so you feel that leg lift now. If your foot's touching the wall, it's okay. It's a little bit of a touch. But I want you to lower that foot down and then change sides. So left foot lifts up. It feels like exercise, I know. And let your forehead be down. Lower down, let's do one more time each side. Each time you lower down, your opposite foot is on the ground. You lift it up and feel the, the hip, the front of the hip bone in the bolster. So you feel the hip is pushing forward and down, hip flexor. Lower down last time, so it's about five to 10 seconds of a lift. Breathe. You better help. Lower down, knees relax, that's good. And then take a few moments like you're taking a nap. If you just can't believe it, that you're going to relax your eyes and your brain and just everything kind of suctions down to the ground. Take some deep belly breaths so you can feel the belly push into the bolster. Slide the hands back down to the, the sides, the blanket towards the bolster, between blanket and bolster. And then as the hands stretch open, press and lift up your head. So you're lifting up your torso and your head. You're straightening the arms to lift up. And so get a feel of upward dog. It's kind of like upward lizard dog. There we go. I'm seeing more of those out and about than probably the other part. All right, so feel the arms. Now, when you come back to table, you lean back, you're going to move your block, whatever's kind of nearby. I want you to scoot your bolster over to the side. And I think a blanket would, would do you well. So place a blanket below the knees. But what's more important here is that you'll have blocks. Okay. So take a step with the right foot forward. If you got an extra blanket, just kind of push it off of the mat. Take a step with the right foot and then take a step forward with the left foot. Take a step back with the right foot. It's like, there we go, back and forth, back and forth. Turn to your right and take both blocks out forward up from the center so that you're in a wide downward dog. Um, and as that position is balancing for your, your legs, one leg feels more pressure than the other with the wall. Okay, so you might have to scoot your left foot a little closer in. You might even have to turn your toes in on your right foot so you don't feel discomfort on your foot. But let's take the arms forward. So take your blocks farther in front of you and let your head lower down between your arms and have that wide stance. I give it a try. It's something you don't want to do if there's anything that's just too much in your back there. You could take your blocks higher and take a wide stance with the blocks, and they're wide as well as your stance. And that might work better for some of us too. But you choose. Right. So this is better for your back or your or your mind if it gets like you feel too discombobulated with your head farther down. Use your blocks under your hands. For some, this is much better this way than lower down. But if it starts to get just uncomfortable for you, farther forward with your arms, bring again, bring the blocks in. 
Take the pose for a few more moments with your head downwards. Nod your head side to side. Feel the thigh bones as if you're uh, stay forward and down on the box, but you want to feel your thigh bones like you're you're pulling up your quadriceps, like you're lifting them up in the skin, pulling up the quadriceps, suction up the quads. Contract the front of the leg. Yeah, it's hard to do if you tip your hips back, isn't it? They kind of go back to slouching quads. Okay, now bring the blocks in and yourself a little bit up. All that blood flow to the face. Turn to your left foot with your left foot turning too. All right, now the quads have no choice but to kind of action. Activate. So my back heel is lifted at the wall, except with the little base for it. And that's just kind of how my wall is, so I can't change that. But at this point, I'm using the wall for. I think for motivation, that's what I think the wall is good for for this. So I want you to try to let your right heel lower down to the floor so you can stretch your calf. The blocks can go up. If you happen to have a chair and you want to grab that, that's probably a little easier to use than a block to give you some you know, higher support underneath your hands. But see if you can get that balance of the cycle of pulling. I think we're getting pulls resistance in the legs. Yeah, thank goodness for a set time for class. You can focus on some of these leg shapes, these bone supports. Okay. Now, bend to the left knee. Now, I, have, I tend, my habit is I slide my foot back to bend my knee. So what I'm going to try to do is bend my knee and just trust. I'll be okay. I've got a wall behind me. I'm going to bend my knee. This is where I should go with it. And then I am going to use my blocks under my hands, or if you have a chair, use that. You're going to scoot your left foot back so that when you move it back, just keeping it on the ground, you don't have to somehow levitate your foot, but scoot it back. And then I want you to try to get your right foot up at the wall. Okay, now if I had my foot farther forward, then I would be doing the splits. I would go kind of, it'd be too crazy for my, my legs. That's why you scoot your foot back to the point you can use the wall for balance, okay? My blocks go far enough forward that I don't take a somersault. Okay. So try to keep the back foot. If you look back to your foot at the wall, the toes are down. Right? The left leg is steeped in circulation now. It's probably not quite upset at you, but it's getting there. Okay. So work with that and then step the right foot forward besides the left. That was easy to get out, isn't it? Easy release. Bring the left foot back and up and try from this perspective to get into it. So my blocks might come farther back underneath my arms. That might work better for some of us. Farther forward might find some security. I always feel more secure when I'm closer, but then I can lose my balance easier. Okay. So we're going a little backwards on the side. So feel the foot to the wall, then lower the foot down, slide the blocks back, the sides your right foot, and then reach the right heel down to the ground, right at the base of the wall. So the calf stretches, the right leg lengthens. Okay, just give it a try. Yeah, you can get through. Breathe. Okay, we're going to take it one more time. So what I'm going to have us do is come into it the same way this time, uh, from knee forward to back. Okay, so you have to trust yourself a bit. Left foot steps to right foot. Okay, so do that. We're standing away from the wall. Okay, hands on the blocks. Now, if my blocks are a little forward of my feet, it might be helpful as you think it's helpful, but then when you lose a leg, it's not the truth, right? So you kind of have to have a back hundred under your, let's see where we are with our lines of energy. They're a little back from the angle of the shoulder, actually, if you look in the, in the screens here. So feet, big toes touching-ish, little space to the heels. 
right leg up. I lift up my right leg and I start to move it back. I tend to drop my head down. So I want you to try to go aim for the wall with your foot, even if the, you go a little low, even if your aim is low. Okay. Then take your blocks forwards, or unless you already have. It's okay. Be careful, you're not hyperextending or pushing this left knee back. Turn your right foot out of the wall so you pivot the toes to the right. Just give it a try. And try to push in the wall. It looks funny, you know, it's a, it's a funny looking angle for the hip joint, but it clearly has an impact on the, the, the density into the left hip and this lumbar spine. Okay? And this is a purposeful position. So if you push into the wall, you're using the wall for resistance, that's it. Yeah, no worry. No worry to lift up an arm unless you feel like bringing your arm to the ceiling. You could. You could work on rotation and big air. Okay. Now, if I work on the feeling of deeper into my hip, I feel, to be honest, my left leg a lot. Not just this right leg, a lot on my left. So when I step the right foot down, and before I get too thoughtful about it, I'll lift my left foot up. And I'll just work it into it. I'll bring my blocks in. Some of you will bring your blocks forward. Depends on what is balancing. My back foot's going to turn to the left. So that means my waist. So it's like I'm moving my hips a little to the left as well. Yeah, this is it. And then maybe your left arm goes out and up. What is true is that the, if you don't practice this, it doesn't get easier. If you take years off of doing it, it really gets to be difficult to do it again. <laughs> I find this part. These are challenging, no matter how you look at it, for your muscles. So just work to the best that you can to kind of delve into those, those structures. Even if your hands stay down, it's fine. Okay, now pivot the back foot, just step it back and down. Lower that knee down and the right leg back. And then taking the blocks out to the sides. And I want you to turn, actually take your blanket away and turn so that you're on your back. You're going to go on your back in a minute, but take your bolster to the wall, the base right there, and then lie on your back and get your feet up. Yeah, so you get a feeling of the hips, the back. This is very specific timing after that last pose to get the hip right into this motion. And then place a ball between the knees and try to squeeze into it. So activate the muscles as if we're doing kind of a science project here. Keep the muscles moving inwards. And if there's a little bit of space at your, your, your tailbone area, your low, low back, like you can't actually put your hand under, there's not that much space. So you can feel it slightly arched. That is good. I don't want you to try to flatten and push your back down. I want you to work on creating space between the vertebrae. That means it's a light tilt. Okay. Now, push into your feet and feel how you have that little bit of a tilt. And reach your arms overhead and push into your feet and lift your hips. And just lift a little bit. You don't have to go your maximum and lower your spine back down. Okay? So you feel the natural arch in your spine, your low, low back. It's a low, low back. Push into your feet and lift up the hips. Okay, feel that position of the spine, the touch down, and then lower down to the spine slow. Okay, now I'm going to keep my arms overhead. You can go up and forward and back with your arms swinging them in this pattern if you feel like that's more. Uh, interesting to you, but I like to just study the spine. So as I lift the hips up, I'm lifting up my seat, my seat from the ground and lifting, I have the ball between the legs, but I'm not squeezing the ball. It's just a spacer for my back. It's actually a spacer for your back, right? So you need to stand a little bit apart, lower the spine. Okay, let's take just one more. If you're pushing into the wall, notice when you push, you can massage through your spine, even before you lift up your hips. So if you are having a bad back day, this is a good thing to do. Put your feet up to the wall and just not even lift your hips, but alternate 
arching the back and just slightly moving, sucking the tailbone under. Just little movements can be quite useful for the back. As you go back down, ease the hips, arms open to the side in the shape of a T. Careful here with your back response. Slide your feet down to the bolster. Bring your knees in towards your chest and towards the right. Just keep the ball there between and to the left. So make sure that the ball is still set between the knees or the thighs. And feel the body go side to side a little more actively, tipping knees to one side. If you can't do this with the ball, it feels too much pressure on your back after all the work we've been doing. You can always bring your feet to the bolster and move the ball and go inch away. I think that. Just make sure it works. Because having the ball between the legs requires your back to activate quite a bit and strengthen. So you don't have to do that. You can do inch away. It's actually feel lovely. Okay, last few moments between these pose patterns. We're going to take the ball out and then I want you to scoot your blanket back Scoot yourself back and have your feet, see if you can touch the wall first with your feet still. So I want you to scoot back enough that if your feet are on the bolster, you're up to the back of your foot with your ankle. Um, you can actually put your feet, both of your feet pushing the wall and slide back. Okay, not, not a little knee bend, you'll find out why. Okay, get a block. One is good. Um, Walk the feet on the bolster. We don't take a walk across the bolster, but just step your feet on the bolster. You're going to be bolster walking now. Lift your hips, slide your block under at the mid height. Now, mid is important here, and then stretch your legs down. Oops, I didn't get my feet close enough to the wall. Yeah, just scoot me up. You want your feet to touch the wall, make a big touch into it. Like you're going to make big imprints. So you'll start to see your footprints on your wall. Constantly cleaning them. Okay. Maybe you'll you'll make a new paint your yoga wall. Okay. Put little footprints on. So create that pressure with your feet. Arms down by the sides, palms open. Okay. If you don't want your blanket under your head, go without. I want you to be mindful of what feels supportive for your neck. If it's a hard floor, it might be, you might be confused about the blanket idea, but it's okay if you need that support. But if you feel the line with the neck to the back of the skull, I don't want you to keep pushing that too far into your chest. That's the problem with the blanket. So now push into your feet. That's the key here. So your hip flexors have a little space. Shoulders are down and in towards the spine. I know they kind of they kind of roll under and then the hip the ribs pop up. Rib pop-ups. Let the arms be a little funky because they can't quite be perfect under you. They have their own formula of movement. Do the best you can to feel that the skin rolls under. Take a slow breath. Exhale completely. Remember these last few poses, you want to take it slow and specific. So if you feel rushed, then you need to move into the poses quicker. Okay, that's up to you, but that's you're going pretty slow with them. Let the legs push, like the ball of the foot pushes, and then scoot the feet up the bolster, 
feel the feet go up the back kind of goes into a natural arch. So when I push down and slide the block away, let the spine lower down. Slide the blanket in under your head and then kick the bolster to the right side of your mat. Take a crossover so that you have a sandbag option and a ball option. Left leg over to the bolster on the right. Ball is at the sacrum and sand is at that outer left thigh. And now, if you're in a time constraint, just I'm going to give you an awareness where we're going with this. We're going to go two hip crossovers because there's two hips and then legs up the wall. So if you end up not needing to know so you can get all those things in. That's just so you know you can do all those those three poses from here on to complete your cycle of, of restoratives today. Now, but all those slow so we can get them in at just the right timing. Okay, but that left tip crosses over and it's really good two minute timing here. So we have the hip crossed over. I've got the ball, and it's really at the gluteal fold versus right up at the sacrum for me. Some of you will put the ball higher. This just kind of helps my leg cross over. It helps initiate that movement of my left thigh over to the right. Left arm is open, head turns left. Right hand could be anywhere. It could be relaxed, breathing slow. By now, your breath might not feel so stiff. It might be feeling like you're cycling through the movement of your breathing muscles. You're trying to stretch them. The ribs. It's a different feel of your rib cage. Left side shifts to the left, right side relaxes into the belly. And if you can feel where the left leg is crossed over, see if you can just let it be without too much flinching out of the leg position, okay? Turn your head back center and move the ball. That's first. And we're going to try to switch it to the other side with as much ease in your lower back. So you slide the sand. And we roll onto the back of the pelvis, both knees centered. Maybe the knees are in kind of TP position, the feet are wide, the knees rest together. This kind of works out nicely for your back. Go we'll straight to the left, use your arms to help it out because it can't go on its own. And then left leg straight down, right leg crosses to the bolster, kind of an easy transition. Ball first, if you're not going to use the sandbag, you, or if you do use it, you want to use the ball first there. So you can anchor your pelvis and then slide it up. If the sand feels like it hurts your knee, then you want the sandbag actually closer to the knee as far as it's cross balance and the fibers to the leg. You just keep in that in mind. If I have all my hip and then you start bothering me, it's just because the leverage is causing that, that pressure around the knee joint, the meniscus. So, Sometimes closer to the knee is better. Okay, stretch the right arm open. Head turns to the right. Balance your hips. And be attentive. If there's something discomforting in the knee, you want to respond with support. Maybe you need one more blanket on top of the bolster so it, it creates easy, like kind of equal balance for the knee and hip joint. Those two joints need some equal balance sometimes. 
with a crossover. Take a few more moments here. Let's settle in. Hip. And when you feel that right leg cross to the left, noticing that the movement of the ribs to the right also influences that depth of circulation, right? Or just the intensity. So keep in mind just that cross over that range. And then what we'll do is we'll take the ball out, okay? And then we'll move our sand away. And then I want you to rotate to your left and then slide yourself to the wall. Take your bolster so that you're gonna push it right up against the wall. Okay, and then your blanket goes in. Don't be lost. Cynthia there, I think so, something happened. You lost Georgia. Is everybody okay? I know Georgia had no, but it was Cynthia. Sit up to the wall and you know get a feel here when your seat is to the wall. I kind of go back and forth, but this isn't always the perfect way to get into this. So you know, but it is close to the wall. That's what I'm trying to encourage. So you roll and swing the legs up, or do you swing in the wall? <laughs> I think you're trying to get your shoulder, you know, and, and to do this, you need some shoulder flexibility quite a bit. So once you get up, and if you're still fussing around to get there, that's just fine. We'll be healthy with it. So find the space in between your legs and the wall. That's okay if you got a little room. Once you get your stand introduced on your feet, you'll be content with that. Okay? So stand on feet, on soles, not on the toes, not on your nose, on your feet. And then when the legs are elevated, you can let the balance gently press into the sacrum. And so you get a feel of, you know, that's lumbar base, base camp for lumbar sacrum, right? It's a, you want that to be a, a bone of stability, not mobility. So trying to be very, specific in weight there. Okay, and then let your arms go out to cactus. Be sure that you have a tiny bit of spacing at your feet, but right? you want to have enough room between them, not to feel like it's too pushed together. And then you kind of just kind of change how that sand sets on your feet. I like a little space at the knees so that the knees are in a micro bend. My feet are in a real flex, lots of flexion. And then as the waist moves with the breath, feel the expansion and contraction of the torso. And spend some of your energy, let's give this as an idea today, with the abdomen movement. Not so much the ribs, but the abdominal motion with your breath. Relax the mouth, the face. If you have an eye pillow, just put it on. You're breaking up.
Yeah, even if you don't feel that flush of the skin cells of the face, it's an inversion, so you're reversing that flow of gravity to the brain, right? To all this upper layer of organs, right? The heart, the lungs. So the face has an effect, right? The brain has an effective um, circulation from this position. That's why the blood pressure lowers, the heart rate lowers, and the legs go up, side down. And there's usually a little more heat in the upper body from this position. And that's why the feet usually get cold. So it's just moving the, the blood from the extremities to the vital organs, including the core, the organs. So if your face doesn't really feel a big difference, you might just notice next time you stand up or sit up, you know, it does tip the circulation, the dialogue inside. So just notice, maybe it feels kind of flushed a little bit. Good for our immune system, getting upside down. So as you stimulate the flow of lymph, you're going to move your feet away from the wall, bend your knees, and let the weight sink into the backs of the legs. Remove the sand, and of course, your knees bend. So feel that pressure that moves into stretching your back. Knees towards you stretches back. And just roll to the side where it seems safe. You're not going to roll into too much. And use your hands, and it's important to end so that you're sitting against the wall for your spine structure. So feel how your shoulders are back. You know how the spine is up. Even though it's arched, it's still up tall. And let your hands land on your thighs. Feel them push down so that the back has a strength to it. And let's take a moment, just awareness together with the collective. Breathing in the benefits from practice, hands to the heart center, and bowing into the heart. Namaste. Thank you. All right.